So we are restricting the domain of this function. And first, we could just think about how do we graph this. Um, it's a parabola, but it's been translated from the parent graph which way? Left three units. And the parent graph goes through 0, 0, so from 0, 0. And that gives us a new vertex. So if I go left 3 from 0, 0, got my new vertex there. Um, again, I'm not worrying about the restriction yet. Um, I need to find another point. Might as well use something that's part of the restriction to help us. So I need to know what's happening at negative 4. So I'm going to find f of negative 4. So negative 4 plus 3 squared comes out to be 1. So when I when x is negative 4, y is 1. And it's symmetric. And so if, if I were just to graph this, it would look something like that. Okay. But the, the domain restriction now says go from negative 4 all the way to negative 1. And so, um, with my graph, I have I have three points of accuracy, but those points are at negative four, negative three, negative two, and I may not have a point of accuracy at negative one. So I need to know exactly where this is occurring at negative one, so that I have um, those endpoints correct. So I'm going to plug in negative one as well. And I end up with 4. So negative 1, comma 4. So right there. So I got close to it. Okay. And this is saying your graph should only exist between those two x values. So now I get my, out my eraser and I'm just going to graph it right here okay so then the last thing you want to check is is your endpoint should they be closed circles or should they be open circles and if you have an equal sign so the negative 4 is with it's let x is greater than or equal to negative 4 so i want that one to be a closed circle but at the negative 1 x is just less than negative 1 so again i need to readjust this and make that an open circle on the right hand side. And there we have it. Okay, so those are the key pieces you need. Uh, you need the right vertex, you need the right endpoints, and the right shape in there. Questions on that one? So it's like what we've been doing before, we're just doing less, we're graphing less, but thinking about it a little bit more. Okay. Uh, Again, go to the next one, different shape here. Uh, work with that restriction. Okay, a lot of us have it already. And so, V shape, because we've got the absolute value. And uh, that plus four moves up four units. From 0, 0, 0, 0 is where the vertex was for the parent graph, so we moved that up 4. And so that's our new vertex. And uh, with, with the V shape, we do have a slope. And that negative right there acts as our slope. So the slope here is negative 1 over 1. So from that point, I can drop down 1, right 1. I can continue that as far as I need to go. And I could, uh, it's symmetric, so I can continue that on the left side as well. But we, won't, we don't want to continue it forever because we do have a restriction here. And so we want to actually start when x is negative 3. So we don't want those points. And then we want to end when x is 5. 
And I think I, that's as far as mine goes. And then I need to check the endpoints. Should they be solid or dotted? And the left, so I meant, I meant uh, open circle or closed circle. Uh, the left side should be what? Open, so I'm going to enunciate that one right there. Connect these. And then the right one is closed. And the reason is we have an equal sign here, so that equal sign indicates that we're using a closed circle. Okay. Yes. Jason. Oh, I I sorry, I, I was at x equals two. Yes. Should be at negative three. Let me fix that. Right there. Okay, so this is your negative 3 on your x-axis. Here's your 5. And so it's only that piece within that restricted domain. So this next one has a... Um, Interesting domain restriction. What's this going to mean here? X doesn't equal n. So how is that going to affect our graph? So what are you going to say, Ryan? Maybe be split. And so if I have my graph like, I don't know, so it's an exponential. Say my graph looks like this. And so say here's x equals 1, how's it going to be split? It's not going to go through 1, so how do I show that on my graph? You're right. It's just going to put an open circle there. Because it's so, that's all it is. So you, you're really, on this, you're just going to graph everything and put an open circle at 1. Because, well, actually, hold on. Am I thinking that right? Yeah. So I want to graph it for everything that's not one. So that's everything else. And so just that one, I just need to put a hole in my graph. So yeah, we're thinking right. So for, for this graph, um, we're going to go down five. From which point? 0, 1, because the parent graph of the exponential goes through 0, 1. And so down 5 from 0, 1. And when that moves down, what else moves down? That horizontal, that horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that horizontal asymptote now is at y equals negative 5. And... Uh, Usually we pick another point, and because I have my do domain restriction here, I want to know what f of 1 is, and so I'm going to plug a 1 in. We get 3 to the power of 1 minus 5, which is negative 2. And I'm going to put a big open circle there, and so then my graph... Something like that. Okay? So just a hole in the graph, everything else is there. That's it. Now, look at the next one. My domain restriction is x equals 3. What's that going to Go ahead and try this one. Wait. See, what, see what you think that graph's going to look like. So this graph looks really weird, right? Um, it's just a point. Because it's saying only graph it when x is 3. So all you could do is put a point. So if we didn't look at the restriction, this is the equation y equals negative 2. 
which would be a horizontal line there. That's y equals negative 2. Um, so that's y equals negative 2. But I can only graph this when x is 3. So here's, so that's this point right there. And I don't want any of my, any of the rest of that graph. And so I'm going to erase the left and the right side. And I just have a point. So that's definitely a kind of a weird case of that. Um, not a very interesting graph there. Okay, so this next part we're going to work backwards. Okay, so we, we have the domain restriction here. We have the part of the graph. We need to come up with the function itself, the equation of that function, and then also write the re domain restriction. Um, let's write, let's just go through real quick and write the domain restrictions. There's not too much on that part. Um, so on this first one, without even knowing the equation, what's the domain? We've done this before. Negative 4 to 1. And remember how we expressed the domain two different ways? We had the inequality and we had the interval. The, this is the only time we use inequality in the notation, really. When we're doing domain restrictions, it's always an inequality notation. So, and it, it, that's what you see up here. This is all inequality notation. And so we're going to say, okay, the furthest left was, you said negative 4. Should it be less than or less than or equal? Less than or equal because it's a closed circle. And then less than or equal to 1. So that's your domain restriction on, on this first one. We'll have to come up with the equation, but let's put that on pause for a second. Let's look at the next one. Um, <clears throat> what do you think the domain restriction is here? Negative infinity, less than or less than or equal? Always less than, right? X, which is less than or equal to 2. Yes, and that's what I was going to make a point at. Um, so this is kind of not the natural way to write this. The reason I've been writing that this way, and it's not wrong, you could write this way, is just to help you make that transition to interval notation, which would be this, negative infinity, comma, to bracket, right? But the, the, the more natural way to write this would just say x less than or equal to 2, just, just that. And if you were um, working on tests and there are multiple choice, that would be the, the way you'd see it. And actually, if we look back here, uh, we have that in the first and second one, right? We didn't have a negative infinity over here, or um, and this was even turned around. So I'm okay with any of those. Okay. Um, so go ahead now. We got the restrictions there. Go ahead and write the equation. All right. So the first one is a parabola. <clears throat> Remember when you write equations, you think about the parent graph first. This would be in the form y equals ax squared if it were a parent graph. But then it's been translated. Look at the vertex. The vertex has gone left 1 up 4. So we're not going to use that parent graph equation. We're going to use a, a translated version of it. So x plus 1 squared plus 4. That's the version that we want to use. And then we just need to know what A is. So we pick another point like this. That's not the vertex, something like one of the endpoints maybe. Um, so 1, 0 for x and y. And figure out what A is going to be. What do we get for A? 
Subtract 4 uh, is equal to 4 times A. A, you get negative 1. So there, there's your equation. All right, guys. Thank you.